culture of non-violence, ultimately culture of compassion. That kind of culture, I think, really worthwhile to preserve. A number of Tibetan Muslims, I think at least four centuries, Muslim community, you see, develop in Tibet. So these Muslim brothers, sisters, their faith is Islam, but their way of life very much in the spirit of Buddhist culture. So the culture is concerned related with community or society. Religion related with individual. So I found really worthwhile to preserve Tibetan Buddhism, rich Buddhism, and Buddhist culture. So these three commitments, uh, till my death, I carry this commitment. So firstly, we all human beings. So on that level, each of us should, sh should make effort to keep inner peace with positive uh, as a day, way of thinking, mainly karuna, metri, and then uh, English word altruism, human affection. That actually we equipped from from birth. We received immense affection from our mother, so our blood already absorbed by mother's affection. So more affectionate mind, our physical condition remain better. Constant anger, constant fear, constant hatred actually eating our immune system, according to some scientists. They say that. So therefore, as a human being, it is very, very important, whether believe religion or not, up to individual. But these basic human values, since we are a human being, it is necessary. We are born that way. So please pay uh, more attention. So think these lines. And the firstly, you yourself you see, you see, keep or cultivate or keep you see, these inner value and then share more human brothers, sisters, as a human being. Then the second, you as an Indian, religious harmony, as I mentioned earlier, very strong tradition there. Think that it is uh, not only ancient Indian tradition, but also very, very relevant to today's world. So you Indian, you say, must preserve, must carry uh, genuine unit, harmony or unity among the different tradition on the basis of mutual respect, mutual learning. That's very important. So then few Tibetans here, as a Tibetan, we must, uh, we must Kasota, make every effort to preserve uh, our own rich uh, Buddhist tradition as well as Buddhist culture. Okay. Now perhaps I think few questions Three, four questions. I always uh, like you to take questions. So don't shy. Microphone? Three German dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Question, question. If I think microphone, this side. If anybody has any questions. Three questions only. Yes. Yeah. Only three questions. Three questions. Melvum, Melvum. It's a question to his holiness. I would like to take some question from young, younger generation. Now you are more like, I think, same. <laughs> yes. Questioner also. My, my, my <laughs> question, okay, okay, okay. his holiness, my question is very youngest question. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I look like that, but question is youngest. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. The question is, in a Buddhist philosophy as a whole, is there a philosophy like conversion? If it is so, do you think Ambedkar took to Buddhism, do you call it a conversion? Because the very philosophy that Ambedkar had accepted is at the politically boiling point today. So I want, how do you react to this? Firstly, in Vinaya, uh, clearly mentioned, clearly mentioned some Buddhist literature. Unless you ask teaching of Buddhism, teaching of Buddha, you should not uh, teach. So that means you should not pursue people to change their faith like that. That's the basic sort of the attitude. Some people say during Ashoka period, some Buddhist missionary also sent some different places. Some historians say that. I don't know. And anyway, in this country, Buddhism is your own religion. One of your own religion. Uh, like Hinduism and Buddhism and Jainism, very close to each other. Broadly speaking, the practice of Shila, uh, Samadhi, Paranjya, these three practice common. Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, more or less, you see, same. The only uh, differences is concept of Atma and Anatma. That's a demarcation. That's a personal matter. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, then also, I think the, this country, unfortunately, cast the system Although constitution made very clear all are equal, but still, you see, s through centuries, that caste system is still there. So I think the, the Dr. Ambedkar sort of, or say the change faith, and thousands, thousands, you see, follower of him because of that. Reaction. Too much thought about today. Because of the distinctions, discrimination. So, that I think the, uh, the concerned people, especially spiritual leaders, I think should emphasize more to educate public the caste system, discrimination. Is outdated, very harmful for the nation, uh, and also harmful for image of spirituality. Now, must come out, talk. That's my feeling. And I'm Buddhist, of course. I admire Dr. Ambedkar's. So I think Kasurda was his real sort of determination. Wonderful. Second question? Yes. His Holiness, you have started your speech by global warming subject. I really welcome and heartily congratulate you to initiate that subject. Because what is your message? Because internationally, everybody is feeling that global warming is dangerous for the universal. So I want to know about your message for the internationally what is your message for the global one to avoid the global warming and to maintain the pollution free from the for the welfare of the human beings? So that is my simple question for you, Your Holiness. Yes, the important is uh, we must learn more detailed information about the serious seriousness of global warming. When I first came to India, no idea. Ecology problem. Then, after meeting 
the specialist or expert, then I realize, oh, global I said, the ecology is so important. Now global warming, uh, according to scientists, now global warming now increasing. And meantime, human population also increasing. So things uh, and the human population now increasing. The uh, end of this century, human population will reach 10 billion. So a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Uh, and the planet is our only home. We, have, we also have the responsibility to look after, to take care of our planet. This is only home. Now, last question. Hello. His Holiness, um, Sridhar. My question is, everybody in this world has a purpose to live. Do you think that your purpose coming to world has been served? As I mentioned earlier, you see, uh, number of sort of educated people and the thinkers, they always talk about humanity or about the world. I have number of friends among scientists, really wonderful. They really carry international spirit of interna internationalism, talk about humanity about the world. So, uh, if we think seriously, then each of us, seven billion human beings, have moral responsibility to, to take care about entire humanity. And then, I'm Buddhist. We always pray entire sentient being. So if your prayer is something very serious. Then this sentient being on other planet, other galaxies, is too far. <laughs> we have no direct connection. But sentient being on this planet, directly or indirectly, we have some connection. Therefore, and particularly humanity. So therefore, you see, as a human being, and then maybe plus as a sort of kasada, kasachisamda. Uh, Buddhist, Buddhist practitioner, I always see uh, carrying that. Whether uh, material, I never expect within my lifetime some achievement can reach. No, I always make distinction: generation of 21st century and the 20th century. We older people, we belong to 20th century. Our century already gone. Uh, and now the young people, age below uh, 25, or, or at least under 35, I mean under 30 years, uh, 30 years old, and 20, uh, and 15, 10, these people are truly generation of 21st century. Now you have the real responsibility to change the world. This 21st century, just beginning of 20, I mean, beginning of this century. So if you make attempt now, your lifetime, better world can, can be possible. My generation, now no hope. So we, now uh, time to come, rest. So generation of 20th century create a lot of problem. Now, let 21st century of generation, let them solve this problem. Thank you. We have a question from the 21st generation. Okay, yes. With the violence having around the world, how can we keep uh, peace in ourselves? So that's, oh, I think when you are very young, you see, uh, full, take full care by your mother 
and with mother's milk. At that time, your mind, I think, very peaceful. Uh, then we grown up. The existing sort of the culture or way of life in the society very much materialistic. Therefore, and then existing education system itself very much oriented about material value. So generation come through that kind of education first to think money or facility. Uh, isn't it? So our basic sort of our experience when we received from our parent or mother, then that looks not much relevant. Therefore now education is so important. Basically, uh, some scientists now experimented to very young children, age two, three years old, show some cartoon way, cartoon. Uh, so the cartoon shows uh, two persons helping each other. The two, three year old ch children, child, uh, when they s see that, very happy uh, and smiling. And then cartoon shows two persons uh, harming each other. Even that young sort of, young, that age, little sort of reluctant. So that shows basic human nature is more sort of loves to see affection, helping, harmony. That's quite true, logically, because we are social animal. Any social animal, affection is the key factor to bring together. Anger, expelling. So because we are social animal, you see, we don't like, you see, that, basically. But our way of life, because of the education system, and then gradually, you see, we neglect about our inner value. So now, education field, as I mentioned it before, I think we should include, usually I describe education of hygiene of emotion in our education, hygiene of physical already there. Now we should include hygiene of emotion. Then our education become more complete. Many scientists now already carrying some pilot project like that. So I think mainly you see think, think more, not just to see uh, learn by heart uh, the, the books, textbooks, or just to memorize the, the teacher's sort of lecture. You yourself think more, more, more. That's very important. Buddhist tradition, the knowledge, three levels. Knowledge from Kasota, based on or said, books or some other sort of Kasota, uh, Kasota talk. Then further analyze, think, think. Then you reach second level of knowledge. That is knowledge through contemplation. Contemplation. That now usually we call Parman. Uh, Parman. So very firm. Some third person say, oh, your view is wrong. Then since you thoroughly investigate, you thoroughly sort of analyze, so you have firm conviction, and someone say it is wrong, then you have the sort of uh, what's the ability to say, no, 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 I'm right, because I thoroughly analyze, thoroughly investigated. Then third level of knowledge is familiarize this knowledge. Then this knowledge then become habit your life. Clear? So that's the three level. So uh, you should totally rely on your teacher's lecture. 
you yourself must analyze, analyze, think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Your Holiness, Your Holiness, with your permission, we have the last question coming up from the Swamiji on the stage. Okay. Your Holiness, since this area Don't is go. full of... Uh, Swami Vivekananda said, education should be man-making education, character-building education. But what we see, present world, especially I am speaking on behalf of the young India. Hmm. What is your uh, message to young Indians? And also, the, it, it appears that whole world will be full of youth energy. So, since you are a world teacher, from this podium, we want to know what is your exact message for the youngsters, let alone the education. Education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man. You have exp explained it. But we want what is your opinion about the younger generation's education. Please help us. I think basically, uh, as a social animal, and also essence of all major religious tradition, you see, if possible, serve other, help other, bring more happiness to more people. If that is difficult, then at least restrain harming other. That's the main sort of practice. All major religious tradition teach us that. And then in order to do that, you, you have to use our brain. Uh, helping other, at least restrain harming other, what is, what is the benefit to yourself? Sometimes aggressive or big liar for temporary, sometimes more successful. So then the people, oh, practice of compassion. Is something wonderful, but not very sort of practical or relevant. So that I think we have to sort of change through education, through awareness. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I give she talks. I think uh, many occasions. I never sort of take. I never took Buddha's quotation. Buddha's quotation only for Buddhist. I usually, you see, take uh, a sede kasota, something like quotation, almost like, like quotation from scientific sort of finding. So that they actually experimented. So Buddha also, you see, stated, oh, oh my follower, big shoes, oh, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So that uh, I consider that's a very scientific way. Uh, so I think one story, I think about 40 years ago, I say I developed more serious or, or say, interest, dialogue or talk with modern scientists. Then one, uh, my friend, uh, one American uh, Buddhist, I just mentioned that. Then that person told me, oh, be careful. Science is killer of religion, religious faith. Uh, then I reflect this Buddha's sort of message. Oh, uh, you must carry investigation, experiment. So like Nagarjuna uh, and then uh, Arya Deva and Chantakirti, these, you see, even Buddha's own word, 
when they find contradictory with reason, then they reject. So therefore, you see, as a Buddhist, if certain concept uh, which you believe, but according to the scientific research, if it goes as contradictory, then we have to accept the reality, like that. So, uh, one aspect of Buddha, I usually describe Buddha, uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, was ancient Indian, not only thinker and spiritual leader, but also scientist. <laughs> so finally, the investigation, analyze, experiment is the key factor to find the reality and to find the, I say, the interest for short-term, long-term interest. Nobody wants a problem, but many problems created by, by humans themselves. Why? Ignorance, short-sightedness, due to lack of holistic. So education is the key factor to widen our perspective and long-term interest like that. Thank you.